So, um, this is the second video to explain some of the tasks. Now, I know I've met some of you um, in school when I was in on Tuesday. For those of you that have not been in school, obviously, you might need a little bit more explanation because I think some of the tasks might have been a little bit confusing. Um, unfortunately, this is always the worst part of this project is the beginning, um, getting to grips with how you're meant to be doing it and understanding the whole iterative design and why you're doing the project. So I'm going to recap very briefly on the first two tasks that you should have done already, and then I'm going to introduce the third one to you. Okay, so... Obviously, this PowerPoint is there for you to have a look at, and I've created a PDF as well so that you can read it at your own leisure and try and understand. So basically, this whole project is you are coming up with a design problem. OK, so as a designer, um, various designers around the world might get approached by companies to say, this is the problem that we've got. We want you to create a product to solve it. So that's basically what this coursework is. So you're coming up with a design problem and you are gonna eventually make a product to solve that problem. Now, the design problem needs to be relevant to one of the contexts that you were given um, right at the start of the project, okay? So when we looked at investigations of the context, so these three contexts that I was talking to you about, multi-purpose spaces, everyday activities, and music. So these are the ones that the exam board have given to us. So whatever problem that you come up with and product you end up making, needs to fit into one of these categories, basically, okay? So the idea is to try and decide which category you want to choose. Um, we do a little bit of investigation to start with. So the investigation, the first stage of it, is to do a mind map or a spider diagram, which is what I asked you to do for the first task, okay? Now, the spider diagrams, so that we can get a lot of detail in and we can really think about what sort of problems and what sort of people that might be affected, um, we go with the uh, method of who, what, where, why, how. Okay, so we think about who could the context affect? So what type of person? Are they male, female? Could it be anybody you know specifically, potential primary user? Who could be the stakeholders? We look at what problems could be to do with that context and what sorts of things could solve them. Where that problem might exist, so different locations, countries, areas, certain rooms in a house. Why is it a problem and how would it affect people? How could you help? How could you make something to help? Okay, so I'm not specifically asking you to come up with a product yet or anything like that. So this is the example that I gave you. So this is not one of those three contexts. This is one from last year um, because obviously I don't want people just to copy it. This is just to give you an idea of what to do. So the context of this was exploring the countryside and getting closer to nature and wildlife can have beneficial effects on a person's health and well-being. Explore is that design can enhance the experience of people, young or old, when spending time enjoying the countryside. Okay, so that context I've started with who. So who could, who would be related to that context? So countryside, who goes out and uses the countryside and accesses nature and wildlife? So I've got cyclists, Duke of Edinburgh participants, scouts, guides, campers, walkers, hikers, rock climbers, photographers, young children bird watchers, animal enthusiasts, dog walkers, joggers, families, okay? So basically, as many different people as I can think of that would have anything to do with that context. So when, when the exam mark in your coursework, for as much detail as possible. So we want these as full as you possibly can. I don't want to see two people written under who. So the next one, what? So here I'm about anything that might be associated with the what sort of things, if I'm going for a walk, I'm my safety. I might think about how I was going to store food. How would I keep my drinks hot and cold? How would I deal with different terrains under my feet? What if it's rocky? What if it's slippy? What about an adaptable coat? What am I going to wear? Is it going to be suitable if it's sunny or if it's rainy? So all those things that I'm thinking about, I'm just writing little notes around what to think about that. So adaptable footwear. Boredom for children. If they carry rucksacks on a bike, trains, like I mentioned, bike repair, weight of luggage that you carry, comfort. So basically anything that I can think of to do with that particular what category. So the next one, where? So now it's countryside, that's already pretty much location. You might not have that problem, depending on what you pick. 
So for countryside, I've thought about different areas that are associated with the countryside. So scout camps, public toilets, rock climbing, outdoor cafes, car security, so countryside car parks, public walks, storage, so camping. But off from camping, I've thought about storage and lights. Okay. Why? So then I'm thinking a bit more in detail about why some of things might be an issue. From where. So I've thought, if you to walk, how can I come water without having loads of stuff to carry the dog? Weather, it can change quite quickly. So what about alternative clothes? If I've gone dressed in one outfit and the weather changes, is there a way that I could solve that and have something that's an adaptation? Security. Um, so if I'm camping or leaving a bike somewhere, can I make sure that my security is good for that, that particular item? when younger children are on lengthy walks so families are walking lights go out in the countryside for some people that are maybe used to go to box and don't necessarily enjoy the countryside children might be a little bit reluctant so could I design a fun product to, keep them, to make them interact with nature and then I've got a how about potential ways so not particular products but potential ways that I could solve some of those problems so it could be something to keep children entertained it could be a storage compartment and folds and stores extra equipment it could be a security device um it could be something to lock bikes and bags onto a fence so i'm not saying anything about specifically how i'm going to make it or exactly but i'm just floating ideas around so you are going to do with these spider diagrams so the three so these ones you pick whichever two you think are going to be easy to do are most interesting. So a lot of people say have gone for the music option. Multi space is quite good at the moment because a lot of people's players, yourself even, are having to work from home in a normal environment such as school or so that creates quite a lot of issues that people might have. but you are picking the two that you like the most. You are doing two separate spider diagrams. Okay. So you should have two spider, di spider diagrams that look like this. You must write the full context in, in the title. Okay, so put the title, write, write the text, these sections around it, okay? So the sections around it are found there. What, where, why, how, and then they are your context. That is the first task that you should have done already by now, okay? Haven't done it, you need to start working on it as soon as possible. Like I said before, this is, it contributes directly to your GCSE. So this project is worth 50% of your mark. Now, when we get to school, we don't have time to go back to this section. You know, wherever the people that have been doing it have got. So if that means you're behind, then that will mean staying in school up sessions because you can't finish the project in the big bit. Okay? briefly mentioned this last week um part of the task that needs to be done it's only quite short so primary user and stakeholders so for this coursework because we are trying to design it as a real product a real prototype you need to pick what we call a primary user so a primary user might put out it lower in school talked about as a audience um or a target user so a primary user is a person will be the end users of the product. So basically for the person that the product's going to be designed for. So for instance, if looking at that countryside content, and I had picked a dog walker. Mum likes to walk her dog, she's got two dogs. I might put down my mum's name, say so I essentially use my mum so as a primary user because she often walks her dogs in the countryside. Okay, or she walks her dogs in the countryside by herself without keeping safe. So I've given an example of a primary user that I could use and why I might pick So a stakeholder, different primary user, a stakeholder is a person or group that got interest in the product. So somebody different from primary user. So it could be a shop that sells the product. It could be a factory that makes them. So if my primary user, as I mentioned before, was my mum, because and if I'm making a product 
think about her personal security. A stakeholder would be, might be a pet shop because they sell in products. It might be a camping shop. It might be a security shop. It might be police. They would also be a stakeholder because product. It might alert the police. They might have an interest in it. They would have an interest in crime rates and things like that. So all people would be stakeholders. And probably so as many different people that have got any sort of association or interest in that product would be a stakeholder. So to tattoo them, I would like you to do start thinking about possible primary use. Okay. Now these this to be somebody that you've got communication with right until the end of the project. It's no good picking somebody that in two months' time flying to Australia and never going to see. You need constantly be able to speak. You need to be able to interview them. You need to be able to show them a product. So it has to be a real person that you have regular contact with. Okay. So it could be a family member. It could be a friend. It could be a relative. It could be a teacher. It could be somebody that you isn't related to or isn't a friend. See quite often, they do need to agree to do it. Can't do them without asking them because obviously to communicate with them about the product and get them to test it again. So your task then is to write down some possibilities for people that you could use as a product and why you might choose them. Now I only want three people as a minimum. If you think more but I only want you to come up with three. So I really want you to name that person and then explain so give us why you might be able to use them as a primary user. Okay, task two. So task one, two spider diagrams. Task two is three examples of primary user and why you use them. Right, task three, task three is the one that's set for this week. We are still investigating, but we are doing it in a certain way. So it's the way. So task three. So this week, you continue your investigation of the content you have chosen. So at this point, you need to choose of those two. So you have two spider diagrams, but you need to pick one. One that you want to take all the way through the project. The one that you find the most interesting. The one that you find the easiest to on. That's the one that you need to read. So once you've done that, you'll create a questionnaire or survey to gather the extra information information about that context. So you've got a few different ways you can do it. You can do it on the computer or on paper. You can just create a list of questions that you want to question or create a survey using the website survey. In a minute. If you choose survey monkey, you only need to sign the account on the first page. Don't want that you need to pay for because you can create a survey and the free one. So your questions should aim to find out what sort of issues may arise when considering that context. So this example I've done is for the multi-purpose contract right now. And I've done my five diagrams. I'd picked multi-purpose spaces. i thought about some full primary users. These are my questions that I might ask now to get a little bit more information about what sort of problem I'm about to solve. So question one is in the Complete your job in different places than normal. So it's quite a good question because it gives you where people are home, whether they've had to leave their jobs, school, etc. You have an idea of, of what things you have to do differently. Two, do you have a specific way to work at home? Some might be at home, some people might be away from the kitchen, some people might be having to make shift off the room. But I need to I can start to think about what sort of product is easier at the moment. Is your job done by hand or using a computer? The difference if they have to work up by hand, then it might cause problems too if they need to use do their work on a computer. So all of this from the gathering is going to help me decide what sort of problems people might be having to do with. Products I might be able to 
may help. Okay. Question 10. How do you improve your current work in space? They're trying to get an idea of what people think would make their life better at the moment, which will help me when I'm coming up with a plan. Okay. So, Survey Monkey. So, when you go on to Survey Monkey, so Survey Monkey, this is the very first page you'll see. The first page asks you to create a free account. Okay, or a page. So, select the free one. You'll name, you need to be first and second name, um, and any other details. So, click OK and create this. Your model is my school email, and it accepted it fine. Um, then the second page that comes up will be this one. Now, you don't want to build it for you. Um, an idea what you want to do is start from scratch, copy and paste the that you've written. So if I come on, I'll say right. The one that I was was multi purpose. I am literally going to purpose spaces. A category. Um, I want to so have a look down here and see what sort of thing best. So I could go customer feed, I could go concept or product or ad testing because I'm trying to test the idea of a product, a problem. I could go on volunteer feedback. I could go on general market research. For this one, I am going to go general market research. So, how to collect responses. So, use my own contacts. So, I'm going to use my contacts. So, okay. so, what I want to do is I want to do one question at a time. Um, it shows all questions at once. I would stay away from the conversation one, but I'm one question at a time. Great. So, So I'm click on right. So I'm going to If I back, I'm going to go for Which room do you tend to use for homework? Okay. Which room? Oops. Right. Right. And I'm going to. Multiple choices because the question is quite easy to do multiple choice. Um, right, so you can do it, you, you can get um, general theory, none of those work for me because I want name of rooms. Okay. So I'm going to click this one and I'm going to click the room. And I'm going to click in this one. Oops. Dining room. Bedroom. Just a carriage for August We don't want to add the suggested ones. Let's turn that off in fact. Right, and that, that answer G is what I was on. Right, I'm going to add other as well. So, where is other? This black corner of the field. If it's not used, they can write their own answer. Okay, now I've got that if you don't want to. And then we're going to go on the next question. So this time I'm going to go for do you find your work for that one? Right, I'm
So, um, I, don't, I don't want to do all two answers because I just want them to write, a, write an answer so that afterwards. So I'm going to leave it saying comment box. Giving me some ways so I could just add on all that. Okay, because that's the question that I've asked. I'm not going to put all the um, this time. I'm just going to know if I can't kind of explain, but I've given you guys an example for future questions. I would like to share um, 10 that I've done a question and click save. Okay. So, like a bit of pre questions, you know, okay, if they haven't, you can change them, you can edit them, you can delete them. There. Okay, so if you want, I'm going to go, sorry, go. So, once you've finished it, next top. Then you can go and close and continue. So I'm going to select this one after I finish stuff. I want it to. So my response is okay. So this is where you have got a few different options. Okay, we're not going to buy any. You're going to serve as your website. So you can send it to people. So if you've got a few people that you want to send it to, you can send it back. Email. You could show a link on the video, um, so they're probably the two best ways to do it. So if, for instance, you were to take countryside as an example, if I design a product for use in the countryside, then I might use this link on um, groups, on blogs, groups on the internet, on groups on Facebook, on hiking, hiking, dog things like that. Okay? So I'm going to send the survey on my web. The easiest way to do this is to probably just get a link. So you can post on Facebook or if you get a web link and you can put that on to what you want. Okay, so I'm going to get a link. Okay, so I've copied that. That's the, the code. And you can send that to people. Okay, responses from them. So in your course, People want to see real response. The survey or the question at their hand or on the computer, obviously, you've got to then send that. You could still send it as an email because you could attach it, or you could send it by paper and you've got to collect them in. This is probably it if you can. Um, responses at the moment might be difficult. So, if I'm being I'm happy for you to just create and we'll see from it afterwards. Okay, so once you've got your link, I want you to send me your Survey Monkey link. So if you've done it, then send me the document or the photograph as well. Um, if you've done it, then I just want this link so that I can check the survey and that it's, it's a true, it's a, it's a link. So I've got my link for that. So I'm going to paste that link. If I, so this is if I was the first speaking. So not got standing or anything like that. So which room do you send to use for Which do you find acceptable? No. Um uncomfortable because the table is a different height. So I'm just making these structures up at the moment. Okay. How easy have you found it to work for 
from home. You will get um, also all the information back, so you will get all the answers sent back to your account. So make sure you, you save the account retail created in the first. Um, and then what we'll be doing later on in the practice will be putting these spots as bar charts and things like that, or bar chart, whatever you want to do. Okay, so we'll be showing these these responses from our, our potential customers on that course. Should have done in this week, which is the spine to them. Okay, two of those. 